What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back here again with another video. So we're gonna check out 11 reasons why millions have stopped watching WWE. I know we know someone that used to watch WWE and they just stopped watching for whatever reason. Maybe they got tired of the same person being booked super strong. Maybe they, get, they got tired of a certain person being shoved down their throat and they didn't want to see that person win as much. Maybe they got tired of WWE management and you know creative not listening to what who they want to see win who they want to see have a, a title opportunity there can be a plethora of different reasons but we all know someone that used to watch wrestling on a regular basis and it just they had got to the point where they stopped so we're going to check out some of the reasons why people may have stopped watching and let's see if we can agree with um uh what's this guy name his channel name is wrestle uh wrestle what's that wrestle mia Wrestle me or something like that. I'm not sure. Sorry if I'm butchering your name, but you know, I've seen some of his videos before in my inbox feed, like my sub box feed. So I wanted to check this out. So we see if we agree with what he's saying. Appreciate all the love and support. Roll to 40k. Let's see what he's talking about. <clears throat> something missing, something very important. That would be all of you, our fans, the WWE Universe. Wrestling seems to be enjoying a comeback with weekly wrestling shows airing Monday through Friday ranging from big promotions like AEW and WWE to smaller promotions such as Impact Wrestling, Ring of Honor and MLW. So why are fans tuning out of the WWE? What's creating this steady decline in world wrestling entertainment? Well join us now as WrestleMania looks at 11 reasons why fans are turning well, off how the do you WWE. His name? I really want to know how you pronounce his name. Am I? Can I not read? I don't know. A turning off the WWE. Hold Join on, us on. now as WrestleMania looks at 11 reasons why. What did he say? Am I slow? Wrestle. Wrestle. Bro, that. Bro, am I slow, y'all? I'm. Wrestle me. It. WrestleMania. Okay. I, I guess I wouldn't see in the L. It's WrestleMania. I said WrestleMania. It's WrestleMania. I can't read. I can't see. Oh man, I'm getting old, bro. <laughs> Let's check this out. I'm sorry, y'all. Why fans are turning off the WWE? Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. We used to see things eye to eye and then somewhere along the way, it all went wrong and I'm trying to figure out why. Number one, a worthless women's division. The WWE can boast about mm. its women's revolution and how the company has come a long way from the Divas era and while the days of playboy pillow fights and brown panty matches seem to be wrestling. over, the WWE continues to treat its female athletes as an afterthought. Whether it's female performers disappearing for weeks at a time, Sounds the WWE right. randomly pairing women into tag teams, Definitely and right. yes we do know the WWE does this with its men, that doesn't count as treating the men and women equally, or a lack of building new stars, the women's division is pretty awful. Other than Bailey, it's difficult yep. to think of any female performer who has been booked well. Raw's women's division went into cruise control once Becky Lynch took time off for maternity leave, despite the presence yep. of Shayna Baszler, Asuka, and the opportunity to call up NXT standouts such as Rhea Ripley. Just remember the time that Shayna plowed through about five women in the Elimination Chamber match? What happened to that? How did w I don't know what happened to that. I, I don't know. She was literally one of the hottest things coming out of NXT. Very dominant in NXT. You knew she was going to the main roster to really, like, to really shake up the women's division. And they didn't really take the opportunity to go with her. They, they, Her momentum was so hot. Becky Lynch, you know, her momentum was starting to die down a little bit. And I honestly think Shayna Baszler should have been champion she should have won the uh the women's uh raw championship but they never went with her and then they just put her in a meaningless tag team feud i was just like bro she's she's worth more than just tag titles she's a main eventer you just have to let her do her thing but wwe not carry on that dominance well, no matter how much Stephanie McMahon brags that the WWE pushes its female wrestlers That's as much cow. as the males, the weekly product says otherwise. 
Water and Shayna Baszler. Go! Oh. No. And Nia Jax, Nia Jax slips. It happened again to Nia. And no throwing Sasha Banks versus Bella into the main event on night one of WrestleMania doesn't make up for a year of badly booking its women. True. Number two, endless rematches. Did you miss that pay-per-view match oh, between two man. of your favorite wrestlers? This well, chances so are you won't have to worry because the WWE will air it the next day on Raw or a few days later on SmackDown. And that's only the beginning though as the WWE repeats the same bout a few more times before airing it again on pay-per-view. The WWE's recycling program is a testament to the sheer laziness found in uh, WWE creative. Rematches can be exciting when done properly, whether it's adding a stipulation to a subsequent match or bringing in a tag partner to help out in a singles feud. However, several weeks of the same wrestlers competing with the same results is a formula for failure when it comes to wooing fans. Number three, breaking up good. It gets it gets redundant when you when you're constantly having the same match before the pay per view facing you know like WWE's say you have someone facing someone before the pay per view then you have someone those two exact same people facing each other again during the pay per view then you have those two exact same people facing each other again after the pay per view and then you may have one more like opportunity for them to face each other again the next week on raw it gets boring who wants to see the same match over and over and over and over and over again i know i don't division has been poorly booked for some time i remember and that there's been such oh, an explosion geez. of teams splitting up but breaking up tag teams is a time on a tradition in professional mm -hmm. wrestling as it's been used to effectively set up big feuds with the intent of creating one or two single stars from that team when done right, a tag team split yep. can create some riveting drama as fans yes, watch friends turn into foes. Well, the problem, like many WWE storylines, is a lack of planning and follow-up. There have been numerous instances of badly booked breakups, including the Iconics and Heavy Machinery. In the Iconics' case, the WWE reportedly wanted to push Peyton Royce as a single star, okay. but that never happened. Instead, she was inexplicably paired with Lacey Evans. Why would you split up an established tag team that could help the women's tag team division only to form an inferior team? Even worse, the Royce's Evans tag team quickly became overshadowed by Evans' feud with Charlotte Flair. As for Heavy Machinery, the WWE had a popular team that provided a mix of power wrestling and comedy. Yeah, they had and something split them nice. Up when Tucker turned heel. Yeah, that made no sense. Oh my God, and then they what never the went hell? anywhere with this. Tucker just I caught just his didn't. Best friend that made the no tank. sense. While it's questionable how much interest the fans would have had watching the two men fight, they never gave him a chance as yeah. Tucker was drafted to Raw. Didn't Number matter. four, ignoring fan favorites. Now we've talked about the WWE splitting up popular teams, but this the problem goes right even too. deeper than that. The WWE's refusal to push wrestlers that fans get behind, whether they're faces or heels, has never been more apparent than with the situation involving the Hurt Business. Hey, While MVP's yeah. work with Bobby Lashley helped Lashley complete his journey from poorly pushed upper card wrestler to monster main eventer, <clears throat> it's doubtful many fans saw Cedric Alexander and veteran Shelton Benjamin getting strong thanks to their inclusion in the Hurt Business. Naturally, the WWE split the group up just yep. when they were going over strong. The Hurt Business is the biggest example of popular wrestlers who've been thrown on the scrap heap, but there are others including main event of Braun Strowman and undercard stars such as Ricochet. Ricochet, man. If that ain't the truth, Ricochet is the epitome of the fans wanting this guy to get a legitimate run at a maybe a mid-card championship just to be mid-card fodder, bro. He is literally a jobber at best, bro. That's his best qualities is jobbing out. Dude is so athletic. All he does is job to other wrestlers, bro. It's, it's sad. He has fallen so far from NXT. Uh, yeah, and I'm also a little stuffy right now, so just bear with me. <laughs> Shay, Alistair Black, King Corbin, Chad Gable, and Shinsuke Nakamura. Number five, pathetic payoffs. We've all heard the phrase, true it's not so much about the destination as it is about the journey. And in some respects, this applies to storytelling. However, no matter how good the build-up for a story is, fans expect a substantial payoff when it comes time to executing a feud or ending one. Right. Let's look at the two examples of the biggest potential money feuds that had terrible payoffs. The first is the heavily featured feud between the Golden Roll Models team of Bailey and Sasha Banks. The two gelled well as two arrogant heels that fans mm -hmm. knew were going to eventually end up fighting. While they were forced to drag this feud out longer than anyone wanted, rumor has it they were hoping to have fans at 2020 SummerSlam and when they didn't happen that... 
Yeah. Big facts, man. Uh, that feud had so much potential, but I felt like it it kind of got rushed, man. In my opinion, I think it kind of got rushed. Oh, well, that's excusable. The WWE painted themselves into a corner when they finally had Bailey turn on Sasha Banks, putting the two in a Hell in a Cell mm -hmm. match for their first match. As fans know, Hell in a Cell is usually where feuds end, so when Banks beat Bailey, there was nowhere for the feud to go. And they yep, this is true. And this is why I don't like Hell in a Cell as a pay per view. I don't know if you guys agree with me, but I think it should not be a pay per view event. I think Hell in a Cell is a match that you don't get much. But when you do get it, you get excited because you know a feud is going to end in this match. Someone's going to get hurt. They have it now every year. It, it, it has lost its luster, bro. So when they did put them in a Hell in a Cell match, you kind of, it's a feud ending match. Why would you start off their, their feud with a feud ending match? It was a fantastic match. I enjoyed it, but... It, it it didn't leave room for anything else other than the feud to end. Like, she beat you in a hell in a cell. What is What else is there to really say after that? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. They took the cheap way out by Bailey saying she'd fight Banks again, but only when she was ready and on her terms. The next fizzled feud was The Fiend versus Randy Not Orton. And despite The Fiend's pinfall loss to Goldberg at 2020 Super Showdown, Bray Wyatt's demonic doppelganger had been booked strongly, so the WWE cleverly booked the two in a Firefly Inferno match, thus giving Orton a way to beat The Fiend without pinning him or making him submit. Afterwards, the WWE teased The Fiend's return and managed to keep fans guessing when he'd return for revenge. Incredibly, they didn't have The Fiend return until Fastlane, setting up a high-profile match for WrestleMania 37. Unfortunately, the match was as anticlimactic as it could be, with Bliss turning heel on The Fiend and Orton pinning The Fiend clean in just five minutes. Not to mention with just one RKO. Fans are still wondering what happened at WrestleMania I, to cause The Fiend to lose. Did Alex Bliss find a way to rob The Fiend of his powers? Did he have somewhere he needed to be in 10 minutes? Pathetic payoffs to promising programs are another way to Look at my guy right here. This was my expression when that match went off. Like, what? The... All this build-up for months. Dude gets set on fire. Comes back from the depths of hell. All the shenanigans with Alexa Bliss for months. Causing Randy Orton to cough up blood. Just for the Fiend to have a nice entrance. Pop out the little jack in the box. And then lose to one RKO. and alienate your audience. Number six, poor planning. The WWE's writers have a number of problems ranging from laziness to having to deal with Mr. McMahon's mercurial mind that sees him change things with no apparent rhyme or reason. Sounds this means right that too. even the best of ideas tend to run into obstacles when it comes to creating and executing long-term storylines, an essential element of keeping fans tuned in every week. One of the biggest examples of WWE's poor planning is Otis's unlikely and downright shocking yeah, money in the bank briefcase when at 2020. The angle, while surprising, was a good direction for Otis, a character who had gotten over thanks to his storyline romance with Mandy Rose. However, as the months went on, it became clear they had no idea what to do with Otis having the briefcase in his possession, and they ran an overbooked angle where The Miz won the briefcase thanks to a meaningless heel turn by Otis's partner that Tucker. No Thankfully, sense. they did get some mileage out of The Miz winning the briefcase, but Otis winning it was poorly thought out and the feeble follow-up damaged his character as well as the fans' yeah. already shaky faith in the WWE's capability at yeah. crafting long-term storylines. Number 7. Pointless. Boring Feuds Pointless. We've already looked at the WWE's difficulties giving fans satisfactory payoffs for its storylines, but feuds deserve a mention for the WWE's difficulty in managing them. They occasionally get a feud on the right foot such as 2020's yeah. Orton vs Edge feud, however the WWE doesn't understand the basic outline of any drama. Like Banks vs Bayley, they put Edge and Randy Orton in a last man standing match mm -hmm. for their first encounter, then expected fans to see them wrestle to see who the best wrestler was in the greatest match ever. Fans also find themselves frustrated by the lack of interesting undercard feuds. Number eight, awful announcing. The WWE has. I can agree with that. Like, there's, there's only like a few matches that you would really care for on a pay per view. Uh, now, nowadays, especially recently, I think we can all agree since Roman Reigns' heel turn, you really only care about his matches. 
Like, there's other matches that slightly interest you, but it's mostly Roman Reigns, whoever he's feuding with, because there's not many, I can say, compelling mid-card feuds that you're interested in. Some may pop up here and there, like the, the Big E versus, uh, what's his name? I can't even think of his name. Uh, Apollo Crews. That was a nice mid-card feud that had some nice buzz around it. But you need more of those because it balances out the car. You don't want your car to only be people look forward to just the main event, everything else they don't really care about. You want it to have like some type of interest throughout your pay-per-view. Like, oh, I'm looking forward to this big car match. I'm looking forward to this match. I'm looking forward to this match. Like you want you want that. So when you get to the main event, they've already been, you know, satisfied and now they're about to to end off the night watching something that they really want to see as well. So more than a wrestling problem, it has an announcing problem as fans debate what's worse, the product in the ring or the men calling the action. This Michael is Cole isn't as true. much awful as he is consistently mediocre. Mm -hmm. Cole is the epitome of someone who phones it in, relying on cliches. Mm -hmm. Corey Graves has his moment, but like any potentially entertaining announcer, you can't help but wonder if Vince McMahon has him wearing a shock vest that sets off if he gets too creative. Yeah. Samoa Joe was a welcome addition to Raw, so naturally they got rid of him. Thankfully, there's a glimmer of hope Small on SmackDown nice. thanks to the addition of Pat McAfee. Yeah, Pat McAfee the downside nice is there's no telling whether Vince McMahon will grind the former NFL star's performance down to the level of the other WWE. Yeah, Pat McAfee, I've, I've enjoyed his commentary um, on, well, him being on commentary, and I've also enjoyed Samoa Joe being on commentary as well when he this was number on Number nine, commentary. corny comedy. For wrestling fans, there oh are a few things gosh. as bad as trying to get a friend to this, check out wrestling, ooh. only to have the WWE make its latest pitiful attempt at comedy. Whether it's Riddle riding around on his stupid scooter, the New Day throwing tomatoes at Elias and Jackson Riker, or Nia Jax falling on her ass when she's not potatoing opponents, there are plenty of reasons for potential fans to tune out and regular fans to turn red with embarrassment. They have enough trouble writing wrestling and should work on improving the wrestling product before trying comedy. It's next to impossible for wrestlers to pull off the comedy uh, bits that DX, The Rock and even Stone Cold Steve Austin pulled was, off during the Attitude Era, era. not so much because the product was PG-13, but because today's product is so heavily scripted. Mm -hmm. Number 10, failing to promote television and pay-per-views. Is the WWE afraid to let fans know which matches to expect, otherwise risking fans tuning out before a Raw or pay-per-view airs? Why else wouldn't the WWE promote television matches ahead of time? Fans like to know what's coming up on TV or pay-per-view rather than just tuning in and hoping for the best. Building up matches also makes the matches seem even more important this because if true. they're getting behind them and the wrestlers are talking them up, there's a feeling they mean something. A part of the problem is that the WWE feels its pay-per-views largely sell themselves. The second yeah. is that Vince McMahon rewrites the WWE script so often that it's difficult, if not impossible, to right announce too. a match when the WWE's head honcho decides to change things a minute before the show. And number 11, the WWE's reputation. Uh. Now, there is another reason that the WWE universe is tuning out. The WWE sketchy business practices. Yeah, As more people Saudi support Arabia. boycott businesses with disreputable reputations, it's understandable why people wouldn't want to support the WWE. The company's laundry list of bad behavior includes its mm. ongoing business arrangement with Saudi Arabia, its mass releases and firings in 2020 during the yeah, pandemic, while some observers saw as sloppy safeguards during the pandemic, them demanding that its wrestlers turn over their third party deals such as Cameo to it for its that I never understood why they had to turn over like their third party deals like to WWE. Like that's that's kind of messed up. That's scummy. Like they're Twitch if they're on Twitch or whatever promoting, you know, themselves, they gotta turn over the funds for that. That's like really scummy, bro. I, I don't like that practice. Like, no. Its own monetization or labeling wrestlers as independent contractors when they treat it as employees, yeah. fans just can't stomach supporting a promotion that treats its wrestlers and workers so poorly. RIP, this man. may be one of the RIP. lesser factors for fans tuning out, but it's a reason for some. But there you have it, guys. 11. Oh man, this was a very interesting video. He made a lot of points. Uh, WrestleMania, <laughs> I got his name right this time. Uh, he made a lot of great points, and a lot of those points. I agree with man to the T like this is one of those situations where WWE they have the opportunity to really put some like thought into their product and I feel like they have as it especially when it comes to like other other talent that's not in the main event scene they don't really 
put as much emphasis on them like they should because at the end of the day you want people to want to watch the show you want people to be invested in damn near everything that you have on the show but you can only be invested in like a handful of things and everything else is just like rinse and repeat like they literally have the writers just writing the same stuff they wrote the last week for the same wrestlers like that's not entertaining this is why i haven't watched raw because you're not missing nothing from raw i'm i'm willing to bet if i watch raw next week i'm literally someone could probably tell me you know that match was on last week in the week before in the week before like i'm not missing nothing because it's the same thing so i really wish that wwe and their creative team actually was creative on not just one storyline multiple storylines multiple characters let their wrestlers be individuals let their let the wrestlers have their own character and be able to script their own character the way they feel it should be scripted but that's just my personal opinion i think that would definitely help people want to come back if they see some entertaining television but it's not as entertaining outside of risk roman reigns he's the most entertaining thing on wwe television and i say it every time i check out a, a smackdown clip he's the best thing on wwe television because they wrote him to be that way so but comment down below let me know if you know anybody that used to watch wrestling and now they don't because of some of these reasons down below i would love to get your thoughts and opinions on that i appreciate all the love and support road to 40k appreciate y'all kicking it with me and i'll see y'all on the next one peace